please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you always. And with your spirit. We have reached a pivotal point in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus poses the question to his disciples and to us, who do you say that I am? It is an opportunity for us to make that faith statement to declare our faith in Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so, brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sin, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are the one sacrifice offered for the sins of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You will not forsake the work of your hands. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shubna, master of the palace, I will trust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Helkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When, when he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. The Lord is 
is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you will preserve me against my enemies. You raise your hand. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the works of your hand. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given anything to the Lord that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for the flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, 
but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Upon this rock, I will build my church. That's what Jesus said. So the reading today invites us to reflect on the authority of the church leaders as God's instrument in advancing his kingdom. We are to take part as active participants in spreading God's divine word receiving the grace of his sacraments, and accepting the guidance of the church leaders in matters of faith and morals. In the gospel passage we heard, why did Jesus give Peter a very important position in the church? Peter has a special role in the process. When Jesus said, you are rock. Upon this rock, I will build my church. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. It is true that Peter would die, but the position he held will not, because Jesus intended the church to endure until the end of time. So Peter's position in the church is indispensable, that of a rock. It lives on like the promise of Jesus to Peter. It will survive the test of time. The office of the Holy See, as we know as the office of the Pope, has two missions, to ignite and to unite the body of Christ, the church. The first is to ignite. The office of the Father, Holy Father, is a living office that shape, shape the past, shaping the present, and will shape the future. Pope Francis speaks to us about the truth of the gospel and encourages us to live that apostolic faith handed down by Peter and the other disciples. So we are to honor and respect the Holy Father enough to embrace the apostolic faith that teaches when it comes to sexual morality, capital punishment, the sacredness of human life, human rights, and Catholic identity. The Pope does not create or invent the truth. He hands on and applies the truth of Jesus Christ to our lives in order to ignite the faith that is already in us through baptism. The Lord gave us the office of the Holy Father also to unite. The Holy Father reminds us that we are one body in Christ, a part of a larger community of believers. We are not separate individuals. 
separate parishes, separate dioceses, and separate countries. We are all part of the one universal church. Our parish communities of Our Lady of the Valley and St. Raphael are made up of believers from different backgrounds, providing a rich of mosaic history and culture, all united in one faith. Such communion is a witness to what Jesus said when he prayed that we may be, may all be one. It is true that there is more things to be done, especially in a world that grows cold, divided, and hostile. One can easily drift from the truth. We need a place, an instrument of unity. When we are united with the Holy Father and each other, we can be sure we are united with Christ in the mission we are called to accomplish while here on earth, in sharing the good news and in spreading the kingdom of God. The Pope has been given the power of the keys, like Ilya Kim in the first reading, and St. Peter in the Gospel. Not to keep people out, but to bring people into the kingdom of God through the gospel of truth. In the second reading, St. Paul writes to the Romans about the wisdom of God. At first, St. Paul struggles to understand why. Why the Jewish people of his time rejected Jesus. Then he came to realize that God's purpose is to direct the church to the Gentiles because God's plan of salvation is for everyone. With renewed awareness, he argued without doubt that God knows its design, purpose, and fulfillment. So Paul is convinced that only God could have come up with such a plan to give a gift of faith to both Jews and Gentiles because God's ways are not our ways. It is beyond our human understanding and comprehension. Therefore, as church, we have a great gift in the office of the Holy Father an office given to ignite and unite, to set us on fire for Christ, and to join us together as church. This was the gift of Christ on that day, at that time, that we have come to know as Caesarea Philippi.
prayer and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of the Holy Spirit may fill the hearts and minds of our young people as they settle in it into a new school year and for an increase in vocation and the priesthood, the and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who support the support, so the support of our prayer, especially the ill and those in special need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our faithful departed, Mary Green and Dolly Marcus, let us also remember standing and show for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Creator of the universe, hear our prayer and make us strong in the faith we proclaim in Christ Jesus the Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with the of the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Those in positions of parish leadership and members of councils might have had on their calendar a parish life assessment meeting for this Tuesday. That will not be an in-person meeting. We are preparing a presentation that will be posted online and available to all parishioners. And we hope we'll have that up sometime next week. The parish life assessment is kind of a state of the parish address on where we are statistically and where we need to be mission wise. So in the coming weeks, we invite all of you to keep an eye on the parish bulletin for the posting of the parish life assessments. Registration for the new generations of faith, grades one through six, continues until the end of this month. Register online or at either parish office during regular business hours. See today's bulletin or the parish website for the safe environment annual renewal process. Even though it may be a while before the customary parish activities return, use this downtime to be ready to return to service. And for about a little more than a week, your new or increased recurring offering of church support via WeShare will still be matched dollar for dollar until the end of the month. Speaking of matching gifts, the $35,000 matching gift for the St. Raphael Church remodel has been about half addressed, which means there is considerably more available. With a portion of facility renovation funds that has been earmarked for this project, we are wonderfully close to having the necessary funds to begin the first phase of the St. Raphael Church remodel. If you haven't contributed, now is a good time to do that. And as well, we are grateful for your attention to the uh, protocols of safe uh, distancing and uh, health and well-being, follow directions of our ministers in exiting the church. Um, your worship aids are one use only, so feel free to either take them with you or dispose of them properly. And a Holy Communion will be given to those who viewed via live stream until 5.45 this afternoon. The burning question in the parish has been, how's that dog doing? <laughs> he is getting along. There is a photo on my phone. If I hold up for you now, you won't see it. But uh, he is getting on amazingly well. No accidents, no incidents, no issues of any sort. He's kind of taken over the house and made himself at home. And as far as the name, it's evolving. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God.